How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to show you how to install a PID controller on a Ranchilio Sylvia. This is the Sylvia M as indicated by these two lights right here. The older version has a solid bar and the on off light is right here. I elected to buy a kit simply because it's faster and they put everything together. There's a nice how to on how to install this yourself. Let me show you what's in the kit and then briefly go over what it's supposed to be done before we dive in into the actual installation. Here are all the components. The solid state relay came in this box. This appears to me like a commercial PID controller and you can definitely program it yourself. The one that comes with Auber is not an off the shelf one. They modified it slightly with additional parameters. So if you were to install a commercial one yourself, you probably have to go through the hassle of trying to tune it yourself. And that involves a little bit of understanding about PID controllers. There are some thermal grease, the solid state relay, you turn it around and there's a big metal thing. This is to draw out excess heat. And this is a resistance type thermal sensor. This one can give you a reading of the temperature, but the ones in the machine only turns on and off at a specific one single temperature. It comes with some zip ties, some jumpers is intended to go in the back of the controller. You're supposed to open this up, snake wires into here and connect to the controller here. It comes with a bunch of wires that's pre-crimped, no soldering necessary. You just need a screwdriver and a hex nut driver. Before installing all this, make sure it's unplugged. Make sure you dump out all the water. If you're a bit handy, I think this is possible. And you also need to really, really make sure you got all the connections correct. If you connect something wrong, like flipped a wire or something, you could potentially blow up your machine. So you gotta make sure everything is connected properly. Brief overview of how this is done. You remove the panels, install this solid state relay towards the back. You install a bunch of wires in the correct places, connect it to this solid state relay, remove one of the thermostats and install this temperature sensor instead. You snake all these wires towards the front, connect all those wires to this box and attach this box to the bottom over here. Make sure everything is correct and you should be good to go. Solid state relays means there's no moving parts. The reason we need one of these is because this controller doesn't have that high a current. That control signal goes in here and then it controls something much bigger in terms of wattage, like for the heating element in the broiler. Without a PID controller, if you just have an on and off switch, when you turn it on, the temperature tries to go really, really fast towards the set temperature of those thermostats. When it reaches it, it goes, okay, let me turn it off, but the temperature keeps on going up higher. It overshoots. When it comes down, it goes too fast and it undershoots. The thermostats turn on again. And so this process repeats and the temperature is not set properly. PID controllers, there's a control feedback loop. So as the temperature gets close to the set point, it powers the heating element a little bit less than before. And so then it goes up a little bit higher. And yet as it gets even closer to the set temperature, it reduces the heating element more and more. So it does some kind of critical damping and it reaches the set temperature much quicker than without a PID controller. So typically you might have to turn on your machine for a really long time and it still might oscillate forever in terms of the broiler temperature. With a PID controller, it'll just go zoop right to the temperature, stays there. I'm saying this again, make sure it's unplugged. Remove the lid, remove the water reservoir, unscrew the four screws here. Loosen this screw and this screw. You don't have to remove it. In the reservoir area, there's a screw all the way down there. Okay, I got my screwdriver on there. Push on the back side over here to loosen it. And then we can lift up. And we've got the back panel. Now remove these two screws. This is a nice flat spot for the solid state relay. You put it here, kind of have it tilted a little bit. And you use that screw hole to hold this in place. Comes with this little screw and nut. Comes with some thermal paste. Push it in there real good. Going from underneath. If you put it off the ledge of a table a little bit, you can use your screwdriver and come in from below. Okay, that's pretty tight. The color coding of the kit makes it pretty easy. You got two red wires, a white and a blue. All of these have no connector on the other side because they go to the control box. And you got these heavier gauge ones, two red, two blacks. And you just connect one here, push it all the way down. Two, three, four, control, blue, red, white, and then red. Now this is all ready. 
Brew temperature thermostat, steam temperature thermostat. Remove the wires for the brew thermostat first. Then we connect the red cables from below to these connectors. There's no polarity to these red cables, so you can put them on either side. Do the same thing for the steam control thermostat. And then attach the black wires from below. No polarity as well. Connect that one. Thread the two black and two red cables under this steam water pipe. It'll make dressing the cables easier later on. No slack needed over here. Just put a zip tie and also one over here. You're mainly trying to get these cables to avoid any metal surfaces so it won't melt the cables. Dress all these cables with a zip tie. You see there's a gap over here. We snake these thin cables through that hole. There's quite a bit of room, so I don't think there's a danger of the stainless steel cutting anything. Now we're installing this grounding wire for the controller box. Remove that ground plug right here. It's going up and then down, so I'm going to steal some of that slack. Putting that in there. Squeezing this so they're parallel. And putting it back onto that connector. And we snake this cable through those same holes in the front. This is a nice spot for another zip tie. We're done with the back area, so put the panel back on. Don't forget to put the teeth washer back on too. This requires bending out a little bit. However you want to get that screw in there. Carefully, I say. Retighten these screws on the side. Brew thermostat, theme thermostat. This is the new temperature sensor. We just need to replace this temperature sensor. So I'm going to remove the screw. Be super careful not to drop your screw into the group head down there. The abyss, it'll be a pain to remove. Remove the other screw. That, oh, it just comes right off. It's not stuck on there too badly. Got some thermal compound there. Put a little bit back on here. I threaded the wire through the bracket. It just seems like it'll fit better because there's an H over here and it fits on top like that. Let's put that on there. I'm bracing it with my finger. The power goes to the main power switch. Black is on the left, the red is on the right. Remove those. Now we're using the power cables. These connectors will piggyback off those connectors and power the control box. The convention for black is negative. So we want to use the black cable on the black connector. Push one in here. Then we reattach the connector with the black cable to the same spot. When we got the brown cable, I'm pushing this connector down a little bit so it heads in the right direction and then put back the red connector. Now we'll work on the brew control button. It has a little coffee cup on it. Just remove the white cable. You completely remove it and attach it to this green cable. The control signal from the controller will now control the brew pump. Then you got a whole bunch of wires. I find it easiest if you snake one of them at a time. You can put it into this steam wand hole, it's a bit bigger, and then guide it through to the left side. Now we got all the cables peeking through. Remove the four screws in the back of the controller. The controller has these 10 screws. And that would be one, two, three, four, five on the bottom, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the top. Remove the screws on the front. The sticker indicates that this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the flip side, these screws is one, two, three, four, five. The picture tells you what to connect where. The ground wire, we don't need to thread through. Making sure the recessed hole, it's towards the machine. We thread all the cables through. Thread the project box through. Starting with brown in position one, thread the cable in between these two pieces. Remove the sheath at the ends, twist it a bit so it doesn't fray, and also put in a little hook Go in from this angle. Pull it back out enough so that you're not clamping the insulation so you can see a little bit of the wire and then tighten that. Now we got one connection. The second one is black and we gotta put two cables in there and jump from two to four. Close it up, close up position four, and we do the rest. All connected. Make sure you use the countersunk screw on the back of the box. The front of the box is not countersunk. Attach the ground wire 
to this corner. This is for safety reasons. I've dressed the wire so that it goes this way first and put the zip tie here for strain relief. If you pull it, it won't come out anymore. So that's the strain relief. Leave one eighth of an inch between the group head and the controller box to minimize heat transfer. Make sure it's flush with the front. Clean the mounting area with alcohol. Remove the backing off the double-sided tape. Push and attach it. The gap is quite large. I don't think there's a danger of this pinching the wires. Flip it back over. All those cables comes up here and there's a lot of slack and can touch everything. Tie them up. I had to use two of my own zip ties here. Make sure none of the wires are touching the metal part. Make sure any connectors that you touch doesn't have metal parts sticking out because the metal cover is fairly low and it's gonna go and push down on all of these. So make sure it doesn't touch any metal here. Reinstall the top cover and we're done. Put the water tank back in, refill the tank. On test, increasing in temperature, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I got the white LED version, quite like this color. I've installed the PID controller for about 10 months now, so I had some time to test it out. If you buy this machine with this installed, it's about $400 more. Doing it yourself will save you about $200. Since this is a single boiler machine, you have to empty out all the hot water from the steam wand before you can start brewing. So let's turn this on and give it a try. The LED shows 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Start a timer about 10 seconds in. We want to steam first and then brew and not brew and then steam because that takes much longer in order to heat up the water. About five minutes has passed and this is the heating coil. It just turned off. The temperature is dropping over here. Once you're done steaming, the temperature dropped a bit, right? I would turn off the steam and turn on the water pump until it reaches 30 right there. Turn it off. When you see it hit 230, turn it off and then it'll just keep on going because there's some reaction time. And now it's 218, almost perfect. It just needs to stabilize it by about two or three degrees. And it takes less than a minute to do that. Usually I would have the puck pre-prepared already so that I can uh, brew it right after I do the steaming. So the fact that it only has one boiler doesn't bother me too much because I can still do it pretty quickly. The only downside is that you have to use the pump a little bit more because you have to eject the water every time. It's doing its PID thing by turning on and off the heater. It's trying to get to 221. Now the temperature is pretty close to the brew temperature. You want to push the brew button over here so the water will come out of this porta filter. And then in order to initiate it, you push this button over here, this tiny little one. And it's gonna do a pre-infusion for about one and a half seconds and then do a brewing of 25 seconds. It would count two times. And if you reach 25 and it stops and it happens to maybe run a little bit too slow, you can actually continue the brewing by turning on the water over here. So sometimes I like to extend the brew time. So I would just, you know, keep it running for a little bit. We push this button right there, 1.1. I saw it stops for two or some seconds. I don't actually have any coffee in there. So it's running a lot of water through and it'll run it to 25. Okay, 25 and the water temperature dropped a lot, right? Let's say we want to continue brewing a little bit longer. So I'm good. I can push this button. One, two, three, however long, right? Auburn doesn't have any kind of referral or anything, but I'll still put their link for this device down in the video description below if you guys want to install it yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.